Hey everyone, welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining me. My name is David Lozo. I'm a Southern California based Day of the Dead style artist. Although there are no skull and bones in today's pieces, today's a uh, little painting on a uh, little bluebird. So uh, thanks for joining me. Fire through any questions you have. And uh, probably, you know, 45 minutes of painting here and then we'll uh, wrap it up. So thanks for joining me again and uh, let's get after it. Cody Brown says, look at that pretty cardinal. <laughs> <laughs> Those all kidding aside, it's going to be a great piece. Thank you, Cody Brown. Fellow birder, clearly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna have a super, super light touch today. You know, usually I try, you know, my line work is strong and definitive. This is a, a fun challenge because we're gonna keep it super light and airy. So this birdie stays super light and airy. Which is a challenge when you have, you know, dark ink, you know, dark paint that you're doing all the detail with. So it's a fun challenge. Looking forward to it. I've done a bluebird and done a lot of other uh, Orioles and other suches, but this is the first time I give this a try. So you're seeing it as it happens. You would think I would practice or figure it out before going live, but yeah, that's just not how. Jacob over on Instagram, this looks dope. Hey, thanks, Jacob. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, if you guys tune in for Skulls, we'll get back to our earlier scheduled program next time. <laughs> Just mixing it up. We're in Birdville over here. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you guys can hear it on the, uh, on the microphone, but this is the feeder over outside the studio is very loud right now. It's fledgling season, so all the babies oh. are out. And, and migration season. Like, yeah, oh so we are right, right in the mix of it here. Cody's saying, what's an animal that you'd like to do that you haven't done yet? Oh God, there's so many. Good question. Well, I think you should do a road runner, for sure. Yes. For sure, for sure. And some of the bigger animals, you know, yeah. the lions, the some of the, the, those kind of stuff that I haven't done yet. I would love to take a crack at some of that, the bigger birds, bigger animals. So on the easel, you have an owl that you have yet to finish. Yes, I have an owl yeah. on the easel coming up ASAP. That, that probably, you know, I'll start paying that tomorrow, actually. What do you think would be next? For animals? Yeah. I never know, because I get all hot and bothered by a new, a new animal, you know, shoots its way in. <laughs> um, that sounded all way more preferred than it actually is. Um, I don't know. It's kind of, it's weird what will, uh, what will work its way in, I would think. Let's see, what's in my, you know... I would like to do a, 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 a fish of some sort. Hmm. You know, we haven't done a fish before. Big fish or little fish? I don't know. Like, is it barracuda-ish? You know, something, some kind so of- So the most unattractive fish. I know, a super unattractive fish. I don't know. <laughs> as, a, some, as a fish or as a skeleton of a I, Great, also a great question. Okay. We've never done a, a fish before, and off requested, but I, we've never done it. So I'd like to do- Well, we talked about a marlin, right? Like a fishing trip. Yes. Funny. Funny slash serious piece, but like guys like pulling in a big marlin or something. Yeah. Like that would obviously be fun. But, uh, so we have no idea. I don't know. Yeah, for being a... Is this like an Eastern or Western bluebird? This is actually an Eastern. 
Eastern? We have Westerns. <laughs> Cody wants to see you do a uh, goofy piranha. I can see that happening. I, I can see that coming about. I can see that happening. <laughs> I actually have done piranha. Yeah, but um, uh, nothing... Um, For the Disney. But nothing uh, in a permanent basis. No, no, so no, no. No finished, finished no. available piece. Art of Sketch on Instagram says you make it look so easy. Mad props. Thank you, Art of Sketch. Um, just keep in mind, this is all that I'm good at. <laughs> I am crap at Not everything true. else. Not well, true. the other things you're good at are so irrelevant to the world. Very relevant. You seem to have great directional ability. Yes, I could be lost in the woods and find my way back easily. I, I feel like no matter when we get lost, you know how to get back to where we're going. Yes. It's, it's really surprising because I I really just don't pay attention while we're driving. Yeah. You know what? That doesn't make a lot of money though. It's not like a no, profession no, no. I don't of... Know how you, uh, I don't know how you monetize a, that. As an Uber driver, I don't think that's going to help you. No. Uh, you have a great ear for uh, voiceovers. I can tell... Voice. Yes. Another way to, you can impossible to monetize, but I can tell a voice. Um, of on any commercial or on a commercial, song. a voiceover, anybody, I can tell those instantly. Yep. For some yeah, reason. these are all super, super you know, fun. Yeah. Yeah, really. These are those are the things like you think of when you think of people that are uh, rich and successful. Yeah, yeah, these are great party tricks. Made me a ton of money. <laughs> In college, all the girls want to know about the, the trivia of some guy on AT T commercial who can't see. <laughs> <laughs> and they still do. Yeah. yeah. We get letters every day. But you can draw. Yeah. I cannot draw. What he says, you make great frames. All right, make great frames. Yep. Well, I like the technique you got going on here. Yeah, hey, just trying to keep them super, super soft. Yeah. We do so many of the like the the ravens and the crows, which are you know a dark color, and it's you know they, they tend to be dark, have weight. We're just trying to keep this guy light and airy. That's right. They're a little more brushwork underneath too for some of the. Uh, Details. I like to send warnings to the bird uh, illustrator community. I do skulls because I like them, but I could come, I could come dominate the bird, the bird world. The skull thing doesn't work. Trying to stay out of the frame of the picture. That's going to be a challenge. Yep. Yeah, I it's good for you to have challenges. I apologize. Get it out of the frame. <laughs> Is it already in the frame? No. I was going to say. I'm just threatening like, you. Damn it! <laughs> I'm trying to put the fear of God in Yeah. You're going to need to step over the line. See, I like the lighter touch on the birds. What, now, why? I know crows are. Well, this is also giant. I we've only painted like maybe one crow this size. Oh. That that you know when you have the space to do the detail. The, the crows are black, so and, and the reason yeah. it's so much harder is they're black, so you only get to show their really the highlights. I don't like to do shades of gray, white, no. and, you know. I like to do them with the, with the blue to show the reflectiveness, which means you have to do high sheen, which and hence leads you to a little more blocked in crow. Yeah. Now, when you do the owl piece, are you going more more? Intense yes, because because there is no. If you guys saw my owl picture earlier, that is, I'm going. This is actually going to be a change for me. It's actually going to. Um, it's very graphic. I'm actually doing very little underpainting. Um, like you know, this is all, all the squash is underpainting. There won't be a lot of that. There's really only on the eyeballs and a bit of the nose. 
So it's going to be um, very graphic. You'll see light textures like this because there is no color. I'm only going to have brush stroke um, thickness to define areas of volume and color and keep it interesting. So I will have to really combine all the touches, light, dark, all into one painting. It's a kind of a fun experiment. I have no idea how it's going to turn out. It's, it's different than anything I've done. It's combining a lot of my styles. So I'm, I'm excited about it, but I have no idea. It's going to be like, oh, crap. Get that out of my system. Is it a, a linear painting? Is it a great horn or a... Um... Great horn, yep. Yeah. Yeah. You need to get on that one. What are you painting this for? <laughs> because it doesn't live stream. Yeah. But maybe I'm looking at the picture now. You only get half of it. It's yeah. so wide. Is it that wide? Okay. Can you work from the outsides in? Do the face last? <laughs> no. no. It, fun, funny, funny you mentioned that. I was actually contemplating where I would start. And again, I always go from the top upper corner to the bottom corner. And this is a piece that because I'm going to be defining it strictly with um, uh, volume of lines, I felt like I have to d immediately start with the center and work my way out to keep it balanced. It's, it's, it's funny. It's a strange feeling of indecision and, and, uh, and nervousness that I don't usually have painting. I'm very confident. I know where the lines go, figure it out. This has just kind of brought some interesting ideas and some, some, uh, you know, second guessing, like the, the nervousness of, of, a of a piece, which I enjoy. And do you think because it's a, and then it's an actual real thing because it's a non-skeleton to go like what why well first off it's, it's a real thing because it was just a cartoon yeah you do what you want you can't mess it up you know you just change lines make it goofy exaggerate it but because it is a real thing and because i've chosen to only paint the eyes and the bridge of the nose for those who haven't seen it let me just grab it right here for this conversation um <clears throat> because it should be somewhat focused mm -hmm. um because I've only chosen to really gouache the highlight here and then the eyes and everything else is just going to be feather detail. Um, it's just, it's a much different approach that will require, I want you to look at this and focus on the eyes. So I may have, maybe I'll go fully dark on the outside edges or I'll get super wispy. I haven't decided that until I get into the painting. So it's really different than this one. This, this is a realistic approach to a realistic bird. Yeah. Um, and the owl is, is a very graphic approach. While it's a realistic bird, I have, you know, it's, it's a different approach. Okay. So you, you'll, you could take a different approach to the same kind of animal. Like you could do, could you take the same exact base of that owl, right? Same background, same block, mm -hmm. and say, I'm going to do it graphically, or I'm going to do it a little bit more realistically. Oh, for sure. It all, it all hinges on how much gouache I was to put down. That's, that's the defining, because if I'm selling, like with this one here, the, all the light blue highlights that I built up, I knew I was going to have a light touch. I wanted it still to have depth and not have to use the lines to give it that depth. So I wanted the underpainting to really work harder than, than um, like a painting with skeletons where they're all completely white and in detail. I wanted this, the colors to help give the fluffiness, help give the texture. When you take that away and you're just doing graphic line work, then it's like, a, imagine a comic where you are just, you know, I'm making up the whole detail. Like there is nothing besides the line I put down to give it anything. And having those yellow eyes gives the viewer a focal point, but it doesn't really help me with any texture or anything. Yeah, you guys can hear the birds on the, on the mic. Let me know. I'm curious if it's. You're like, is he at a zoo? What's happening? Yeah, it's been. Because we have feeders. Well, I mean, about 40 feet away, right? 50 feet yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. Not like they're close, but you, you can just hear them. They're just like excited and eating. And well, and now the scrub jay is coming right through, which you can't help but hear. It's really pouring it on. 
So Kevin over on Instagram says, I love your work and have a few prints. Is it possible to commission a hummingbird painting? Mm -hmm. Well, yes, it is, Kevin. Short answer. Um, you might be able to save money. I have three hummingbird paintings on the on the uh, on my site already. If one of those matches what you're looking for, but yes, I do uh, commissions. I only do large scale commissions, um, but I do large scale commissions, and you can send me an email. Um, so this this is not a large scale. No, 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 no. Large scale is 18 by 24, or so bigger. I, or bigger. That's that, that's the only size commissions I do. Um, so if that's something you're looking for, yeah, yeah, I do commissions. You can just uh, check out my site and draw me a line. Get more information. Just send me an email. Or you can go to the website and in the search box, type in hummingbird and it'll pop up any pieces that have hummingbird. Them. Yes. And, and that might do that satisfy. first. Yes. Yeah. That may satisfy and get you exactly what you're looking for. But if it doesn't fill your bill, then yes, I do have a, I do do commissions. And so Cody is saying, uh, you challenge me when I am learning to distinguish dark lines and light lines with not using color. I sometimes lose track of the way to make areas pop. And, and that's, and it's a challenge, like, especially with, um, the best way to learn that is to do, to imagine doing something that's black, you know, you got to make it pop and you can't just fill it all in and have a big, huge black area. So you gotta, you know, separate it from the other pieces, um, and kind of shade it. If you look at, um, comic stuff, like again, Batman's always an easy one to look at because he's so dark. Um, but you know, how do you pop those, you know, the front, if he's got his fist facing forward, how do you pop a black fist off a black uniform off a black mm -hmm. shade? You know, and those, those, that, that's the hardest thing to do um, when you don't have color to do the heavy lifting for you. Um, the way you do that is, you know, with highlight lines. Um, this is a bad piece to show that because there is none. But um, imagine, you know, my black hand, if I, my, I'm in a black glove and I'm from a black chest, you know, you give it a hairline along the top, you know, to sh show that top line. <laughs> Easiest way to look at it is to go look at some all black and white inking comic guys they do it way better than i do um look at uh, jim lee um uh who's the the guy david from marvel finch. david finch tremendous inker also um go look up those two guys both excellent um without color you know the comic guys are so good at that yeah that i mean that's their bread and butter exactly it's, it's a line mark. you know they they design it and even though most of their stuff gets colored it almost doesn't need to be like you get the the way you get every, they take care of all the the uh, the heavy lifting for the colorists. <laughs> Karen asks, uh, "Will this morph into a bird skeleton under a black light? <laughs> <Just> <laughs> turn the turn it sideways a little bit. You're like, Ooh. see, underpainting. Yeah, do a little uh, paint, <laughs> glow in the dark paint, a little underpainting. It's a lot. I don't know. You got to buy it to find out. <laughs> and they get home. Oh, boo! It's nothing." Patterson Art over on Instagram. Just give a thumbs up. Patterson. Thank you. Thanks for hanging out. Fun to, to mix it up a little bit. I think the last streams have all been uh, cutesy skeletons, so we decided to mix it up. Oh no, we do a little bee. We do the serious PP. So. How many sketches will be for sale during the Christmas in July sale this year? There are 63 sketches in the Christmas in July sale. For those who don't know, um, the Christmas in July sale is a huge sale we have every year. Um, tons of stuff that's, we have blems, we have markdowns, retired stuff, we have uh, sculpts. Uh, so I used to do tons of sculptures. I have all kinds of, uh, I dug off all the remaining blanks that we have and all the blanks are going to be available. We have, again, sketches. There's going to be 63 of those in there. I have some samples from, from products that have been produced with my art on it. All kinds of stuff. Because we haven't done a sketch sale uh, for a few years. I think we're... Yeah, 2019, like I think years. was the last one. Yeah. Yeah, before we moved. Um, it was too hard to do it last year after we moved and such. So, it's, yeah, it's like pulled it all together and... and put them into groupings, kind of try to make the pricing really simple. We'll try to make the sizing a little bit more simple, but, um, fun stuff, some serious, some funny. Yeah, exactly. Something for everything. A lot of the small paintings you've seen in my live stream, um, are sketches, you know, so you'll see a bunch of, you know, familiar pieces. Like, oh, I remember that piece you did. 
a few inkings too. Yeah, there's a few inkings in there. Um, there's uh, again some serious pieces. A lot of them are, are on vellum, which is a, like a really thick, thick um, tracing paper style thing. That I love to draw on. So there's a bunch of those in there, and there's some regular paper. There's some pencil sketches that are like a, a, as a bird. Like I think there's a red tail hawk in there. There's a, a pirate. There's really everything. A really wide range of stuff, and they're all you know under 100 bucks. What we're doing is is that's going to go live on July 6th to the general public. So it'll be it's a Christmas in July. So but we wanted to get past the Fourth of July and everybody doing whatever they're going to do. So this is like that Thursday after the Fourth of July. But if you're signed up for the email from his site, you go to the newsletter sign up. Those people were actually going to give a, a, a week in advance access to the sale. So if you're signed up on this list, first we're going to message soon to show you some of the stuff. So you kind of know what's coming. You can maybe prepare or think it through, but also um, you'll have a, a week's worth of time to shop the sale, which is going to blow a lot of stuff out. Well, and I'm, yeah, exactly. Let's be honest. Yeah. The, the, like the t-shirts, because you know, whenever we make a new t-shirt design, we have a sample sent to us so that we can make sure the colors are right, that the, the material's right, that it lines up right on the shirt, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, these are totally untouched, unworn shirts that, that have come to us just to, to review them. And so we're just blowing those out for 10 bucks a piece. And I can tell you right now, the sketches, the t-shirts, um, a lot of that stuff will be gone before it gets to the general yeah, public. Yeah, I, I don't suspect that $10 shirts We'll make it through. I don't think any will make it through. No, history has shown us anything. That yeah, that sketches, stuff's going to be. It's hard to say because, you know, some people love sketches and some people maybe don't understand them, but they're originals. So that's really interesting. Well, and that's the other thing, too. Yeah. So when you get a sketch, you're getting original work that I've drawn it's hand, you know, hand done work. Unlike a painting, which would cost you exponentially more, is the chance to yeah. own original art, you know, for a, a fraction. In a lot of cases, it, it, it's it's the beginning of the artwork. It's what you know where the art starts. So it's, it's really fun to see the raw lines, the choices I made, maybe some aborted choices. You know, it really yeah. is a, is a raw way to look at the art to see like, oh look, he erased that line. That was going to be different. You know. Yeah. So there'll be there'll be a good amount of those. And I think of what else? Blank sculpts. In the past, they've always painted all the sculpts, and we have only a handful left. Um, and then that's it. The molds are the destroyed. Molds are yeah, yeah, this, this so is it. We're like, well, let's put them out as blanks because then people can do whatever they want, DIY them and paint them however you want to paint them. And so those are going to be super cheap. And, you know, but this sale is like a, really a blowout sale. It's like a spring cleaning sale. Like we go through everything we have, all the samples from collaborations with companies, all of the samples that we get for clothing all the sketches, all like just everything, everything. And then we also put all the regular stuff on floor too. It's like clean house so we can start fresh um, and with our inventory. And a lot of things, again, like the sculpts, the sketches, they're, they're done. After this, there will be no more sculpts because again, the molds are gone. These are, these are blanks that I, uh, I didn't paint a painting over the years, you know, so there's a ton of those. And again, the sketches are original art. You know, once they're gone, they are gone. So yeah, I would say if anyone's interested in any of that, uh, go to the website, go to davidloza.com, scroll to the bottom and then sign up at the newsletter because those people are going to have, you know, seven days advance notice on the sale. You'll have access. They're going to get a secret week, link, they get a secret link mailed to you before anybody else does where you can start shopping. Secret. Yeah, I got to, I got to think a lot of the, the really expensive stuff, the sculpts, the the shirts, the sketches, I think those things will be gone. Especially the sketches, because it's just, there's just not a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. Move your head back. Cool. What are you saying that, uh, he says, I, uh, I need some new sketches with possible tattoos in the future. Is that by far the Mexican standoff turned into the tattoo is my favorite? <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, it's it's the rawest form of art. I mean, hand, you know, pencil art mm -hmm. and inkings and stuff. It's, it was really fun for me to go through and see them again, too. Some of these pieces, you know, they were just, some were, were only sketches, you know, just a fragment, you know, to experiment with, or some became little, um, paintings. Some became full-size paintings they were actively selling now. So it's kind of amazing to see the little uh, progression. 
you know, how it starts, like a reminder. So tempting to go back into the bird and, and overwork it. Yeah, I can imagine. You know, because again, my normal style is to really carve out to add like 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 we're talking about um, with Cody. You know, add more volume down here to give it some weight to pull that shadow out. But you just gotta you gotta be soft with birds. Yeah, yeah. Stuff that if I was doing yeah, a crow, but I like that. I like the difference in in art, and that's not always graphical. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes the animals can be like I think one of your hummingbird paintings um, has two hummingbirds in it. It is more graphical, mm -hmm. very bright hot colors, very graphical in, in how you painted it. And then you have your single hummingbird different painting all together, and it's just a little bit lighter feel. Yeah. Again, and this is what I, I do hundreds of paintings um, and to keep it fun for me. You know, being able to mix up styles just keeps everything fresh, different approaches. I may paint the same thing a few times, but it's, it's just different approaches. Do you decide in advance if you're going to go graphical or, or light? The subject tells, kind of decides it for you. Like I knew he was going to have to be light. This is a small piece. Yeah. I knew that the, I was going to go a little heavy with the foliage on the outside, the, the, the blueberries and the stuff. So I wanted to make sure he was light contrasting to the, uh, to the blueberries. Llama Mama over on Instagram says, hi, just popped in to see you, beautiful work. Hey, thanks, Llama Mama. Mm, Appreciate you good. coming by. <laughs> Everyone's name should find. Yeah. We're just doing our little, uh, our bluebird on blueberry. Instagram, you're going to start going off with God. Let me slide a little bit to the right. A little bit, yeah. Slide into the right without yeah. breaking anything. Motherfucker. Now look what I've done. What have you done? Made you break it. Well, yeah, that was definitely your fault. Is that better? Uh, hold on. There's like a 30-second delay. 30-second <laughs> delay. Oh, show how bad it is in a second. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Just so they can still see the bird, but see the, uh, the berries too. Facebook and, can see everything. And all, all the other channels, but Instagram is a portrait. For the scoring home, here's the frame that it comes in. So that's the whole little, the whole piece. So this piece is available. Yep, this piece is available. Um, just message me if you're interested. There's uh, no prints of this. This is a one-off. One day I'll put out a bird painting book. That's the only way these paintings will be done. Because <laughs> we have uh, done the Oriole, we've done Cardinal. Oh, we, have, we, we did the prints of the Cardinal. Yeah, we didn't do the Oriole and the prints of it. Oh, good. Kevin on Instagram said, uh, I'm about hummingbirds, said, I just checked out your shop online and I think I found the perfect print. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, there's a few a few cool options. And, you know, even the most expensive print is about a fifth of the price of an original. So, you know, much, much easier to stomach.
Are you saying I'm too expensive? I am not. <laughs> I'm saying there is a uh, price difference. Price solution. Yeah, the Mockingbird. Is there blueberries in your, I mean, I have blueberries in your plantings over there. You're going to be blueberries in there? No, you know, I was going to do blueberries and then I just, I, I, nobody cares enough. Like you kind of eat them, like you'll enjoy blueberries, but I don't eat them. Uh, and that's the most important thing. Uh, <laughs> so no, no, I did uh, boysenberries, blackberries, raspberries, and loganberries. All right. Berries. I'm not getting blueberries is what I heard. You're not getting, not this year. I wanted to see first how it all kind of shook out. Oh, did you get my supports? No, you didn't. I was going to order some. Yeah. Um, just because I, I wanted to see if, if birds and squirrels will bother them and, you know, how it's working before. Because blueberries really want to be free. So do raspberries. My little growing environment's small. So Kevin is asking, they're saying they're going to be in Encinitas the second week of July, and maybe he can pick it up rather than ship it. Mm, second week of July. Probably do that. Yeah, what you... Shoot Dave a message with the, the days that you think that you'd be around... Um, because I think we're I think we're around. I think we're around in July. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we are. I'm just trying to think of what, what else is going on during those weeks. Fourth of July, we don't go anywhere for. But I uh, um... But, um, just kind of what, what that month will look like because we'll be doing the sale stuff, etc. The pain of the blueberry, the little uh, blossom part, I guess you'd call it. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's a, I enjoy painting that. I don't know why. Hmm. A little uh, flowery. I never really looked as close as I did when I was doing the sketch for this. My reference material for the blueberries. Now, see, Kevin Saunders says, our boysenberry is four years old, and this year has been the biggest yield, but birds are the biggest issue. In the past, they would steal them before we got to enjoy them. Uh, birds have destroyed yeah. our uh, birds and squirrels have eaten our apple. They've eaten our yeah our apricot or our plum. What did they eat the other one? Of? Well, in the past, the, the squirrels stole ev everything almost. This year, it's, it's hard to say because I I tried to put on the fruit trees. I tried to put these reflective things on. I don't want to put netting because I don't want anybody to get caught in it, but. Um, I'm hoping that our our um, that our apricots and plums will make it through, but they they took all the nectarines. Bastards. Um, and in the past, they they I think it's squirrels that are taking the um, little mandarin oranges. Mm. And they do they do like avocados. They but they usually eat them when they're fallen already, so that's not like really a problem. But my berries I have in a um, raised beds with with netting around it, and I'm really being protective of them. Because I'm like, listen, I've spent four hundred dollars. I won't even say how much trying to grow about dollars <laughs> worth of berries. I mean, let's be honest, my my crop is not going to be impressive, uh, and I just can't have them stealing what little I make. <laughs> I've gotten uh, four strawberries so far off of my strawberry plant. I just, it would not be fair if they took those. So for what we spent on on the beds and stuff, these, these uh, better be the best strawberries I've ever had in my entire life. I started saying four hundred dollars. That was just the raised beds, <laughs> <laughs> like, the, the soil and the acidifier, and you know the gosh darn plants. Anyway, I'm like, but I did check yesterday, and there are ras different raspberries popping up, and they look lovely, and the uh, blackberries starting to produce. I so saw just. <sighs> Gotta keep the birds out. 
If it doesn't end up working, I'm honestly just gonna pull the plants out for next year, plant them in a space where the birds can just go at it, right? Let the raspberries get five feet tall, you know. And if I think if it doesn't work, I'm just gonna um, buy them from the store. Yeah, you can, just get, <laughs> you can get a nice little basket of uh, raspberries for like eight bucks for a <laughs> So I guess cost-wise, <laughs> blueberries probably about the same. You don't get boysenberries in the store, really. You certainly don't get loganberries. You know. And I'm growing like certain tasty strawberries. It's you know what we get around here is is kind of a um, pretty good crop, but most people. You're in the get strawberry crop. capital of the world. Hi, yeah, uh, we, we get good crop. I, there's no reason I should be growing. <laughs> there's no we get. I mean, we're yeah, we're like the, one of the biggest strawberry growing areas. But I can see why other people would grow strawberries for sure. People not in the strawberry capital of the world. Yeah, he's saying that's what they're gonna do. Let the plant do its thing. Yeah, because if I put the raspberries out in the open and the boysenberries and the blackberries, they are, I mean, they'll get four feet tall. They'll produce, they'll spread, you know, and then maybe I get some and I share some with birds. I don't know. That If this doesn't work, that's where we're gonna go next year. I'm not sure all. But so far they look like beautiful. Like I got beautiful little raspberries, like white ones. You know, and they're all precious, and I'm like babying them right now. And I just every time I go down uh, to the beds to check on them, I just I expect to see a complete slaughter. And so far, it hasn't happened, but I I know it's coming. I'll, I'll open up the little beautiful little netting, and it'll just be like debris everywhere. And somebody will have broken in. Squirrels drunk on my beautiful little raspberries. <laughs> Marcy over on Instagram says amazing painting. Hey Marcy, thank you for joining us. Yeah, I do enjoy these uh, these smaller paintings sometimes. It's a fun yeah. fragments. I like the nature stuff. I mean, that's my jam anyway. But mm -hmm. I, I think it's funny to see a, a graphical take on nature. Yeah, you're not gonna. It's not typical. That's for sure. Usually, you get uh, cartoons or you know very super aggressive graphical. Just put out like a little a little baby set of the birds. You know, mm -hmm. just because these are such pretty little paintings, and then to think that they never get seen again. So how many do we have so far? Again, we have, we have, we have this and the Oriole, the Cardinal. You have, you have a few hummingbirds. Blue Jay? I did a Blue Jay, remember? There's a Blue Jay. Obviously a lot of crows and stuff, but I was thinking more of like the little little birds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the smalls that we didn't do anything yeah. with. Strangely, I don't know how you have it done. Oh, you've done house finches in, in inkies, but not in full paint. Not in full paint. Uh, some smalls I did, yeah, yeah, on top of a little skull. Yeah, but that was a long time yeah. ago. Yeah, we've done gold finches also. I mean, what we see around here with the house finches and, and lesser gold finches, I'm surprised we're not being paintings of those. Um, <laughs> hint, hint. You could definitely do a scrub jay or a uh, stellar's jay with your lot of those. I really want to see a roadrunner because obviously we're seeing a roadrunner come to our house now mm -hmm. almost daily. Being naughty. It's one of those birds that the roadrunner where you walk out of your front door and the roadrunner's like sitting on top of your car. And you're like, oh, hi. Yeah, he is uh, He is here. Or like you'll see him scurry away and then jump up onto something and something else and then jump up onto the roof of the house. You're like, okay. <laughs> He's very parkour. So you're about done with this? Yeah. Okay. So get, get your questions in if you got any. Just doing some extra stuff here and there. But we're going to keep him airy and white. And actually make him more airy and more light. I do want to thicken up that. I'm gonna give him some weight and put an under shadow on this log.
So again, get your questions in real quick. Just another minute or two here. Again, thank you guys for, uh, for joining the stream. Again, if you want to uh, purchase this piece, just message me. Also, don't forget about the Christmas in July sale. Get on our email list because it's all going to go fast. I don't want to hear any crying. No. People are already messaging trying to get early access. <laughs> Cheaters. All right, that's going to wrap things up now. Just a couple little touches here or there. Again, thanks for joining me on the stream. Appreciate it. We'll be back again next week, hopefully. Just uh, let me know if you have any questions afterwards. Feel free to pass them on through, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care.